Hey, hi. We're going to pop the bubble of doubt. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that before. <laughs> Validating your results through evaluation and lots of different forms of evaluation. So uh, my name's Lucia, and this is my horse, Lyra. She's an interdimensional being that looks like a horse. Oh, I wasn't supposed to say that, was I? No. <laughs> she does amazing healings. Please come and join her one time on our ranch. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm Carrie, for those who don't know me. I've been with the uh, uh, IBA for several years, about 18 years. And my background is osteopathy. It's physical therapy. I'm a doctor of oriental medicine as well as athletic therapy. Go ahead, switch. There we go. So something that's very dear to my heart is evaluation. I've been around, you know, like I said, the IBA for, for 18 years. And there's a reason for that, because it works. I didn't always know that it worked. It's through evaluation that I saw it work. Next one. Now I feel like a puppet. Just a minute. I thought this was control. No, it isn't. This okay. is control. This is control. <laughs> you know, what we do as body talkers, you know, it's very subtle work, you know, seeing these shifts. When you looked at what John did today and yesterday, you know, that's the magic of body talk. You know, and I got to witness it firsthand. You weren't there. You just observed. But I got to feel the legs. I got to feel the arms. I got to feel the diaphragms. I got to feel those shifts. So why do we evaluate? Two reasons. One reason, I didn't say click yet. One reason <laughs> is for you, the practitioner. You evaluate so you develop wisdom. You develop the confidence. You know, John's developing all these new techniques. How do you know they work? You know, the patient, as he treats them, they get off the table, they go, I feel great. But what happened? You know, it's very powerful. We did, I remember one year, it was at that same conference, you did that time shift thing, is I did a lecture on the power of one link. I did a full body evaluation and just did one link and it was a huge shift throughout the whole body. And it's evaluation that shows you that. The other person that evaluation is important for is the patient. Because the patient is on the table, if they can feel those changes, they get excited about what you just did. For those of you, your husbands, right? Your wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, friends, peers. It's important for them to feel those changes. Then they want to continually get those sessions. When I evaluate, I use the letters ARTS. That's what I teach in the orthopedic evaluation class. ARTS, A stands for asymmetry of posture. So we can look at the whole body or I can just look at a shoulder or a knee. R stands for range of motion. You saw me do that this afternoon. Active and passive. T stands for tension test. You saw me evaluating that woman's organs. I'm feeling for excess or deficiency, tension or too loose. S stands for special tests, neurological tests, muscle testing, and things like that. So it's interesting, in my clinic, I'm in a, you know, a small room and I'm always focused on the patient. I've treated over 20,000 patients you know, over the past 18 years. So I see that this stuff works again and again. And it was interesting that Lucia invited me to come to uh, Armstrong uh, to teach a class, orthopedic I evaluation. Can I, I think that's a different slide. No, next one, it's the next one. Remember I just jiggled the water. <laughs> one of the things in Armstrong, if you've ever, you know, if you haven't been to Lucia's place, you need to go there. You know, for me, I'm a clinician, and, and I was like, you know, duck out of water going into her place. I don't know what you feed your animals there. These animals become part of the treatment. I remember working with this uh, one woman, and that dog, what was the dog's name that came in? And anything I did to the woman or anything she did, the dog did the same thing. And finally, when she collapsed, the dog went to sleep as well. You know, we'd have butterflies coming in, we'd have horses coming in, all sorts of different things. So one of the key things that I learned going to Lucia's place is noticing the mirror in the environment. I was always just focused on that patient, but now at her ranch, we were treating outside, all of a sudden you notice different things happening. We were in uh, Indonesia, and we were on, remember we were on that wooden platform and all those fish were there. And we were there for a while and the fish were all over the place. As soon as we got into the treatment, all the fish gathered around. It wasn't because I was going to feed them. They just were, you know, resonated to that energy of the treatment. 
And that was a cool thing because we have people when we're doing these sessions, all their job is is just noticing the mirror in the environment. Next one. So as a result of these experiences, there was five vets from Indonesia, and we'd all sit around a campfire at night. You know, it was a beautiful night. And we started to talk about maybe going to Indonesia, working with these animals, but somehow integrating orthopedic evaluation to get some validation to what you've been doing already for many years. Next one. You're up. Oh, right. And then we had to She's pop. She's got the, the yellow slides. We had to pop his bubble of doubt <laughs> because I've been watching miracles all over the world and I have no doubt. Well, maybe I did because I did the project. That's right. Mm -hmm. Anyways, we just wanted to find a way to um, have an experience. And can you validate an experience spe specifically because we're using surrogates? So it's a no touch process, yeah? But the bigger picture for us was, does being a non-attached observer using a surrogate affect change on the client? Yeah? Uh, remember the non-attached observer part? You got this too. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, I thought about how could we do this because it's a non-funded, it was a pilot project. And so we gathered 15, pe well, I gathered 15 people that I thought would be super freaks and we could have some fun together. So Carrie came on and worked with the orthopedic evaluation, treatments, um, observation. I was doing sessions and observations of the environment. And Thornton uh, Streeter, Dr. Thornton Streeter and Kimberly Skipke came to measure the change with a biofield viewer. So you'll see some pictures where every before and afters we also incorporated the biofield viewer, which then is validating the orthopedic evaluation. We had Dr. John coming as a chiropractor doing sessions and observations. We had veterinarians, veterinarian lecturers, chiropractors, osteopaths doing the same thing. And we filmed everything and we uh, had a sound guy too. So you see a film at the end of all of this. Let's talk about the biofield viewer for a sec. I'm not gonna talk about the biofield viewer because you know why? Why? In the Thornton video, there? Thornton does a really good talk about the biofield viewer. You're up, it's yellow. <laughs> I think the elephants called me in about 2010. And uh, when I went to meet them, they said to me, you have to have a mystery school here. And you have to bring people because we want to teach people. So fortunately, all of the keepers there and the heads of the uh, National Park agreed with me that their elephants were there partly to teach others around the world. So we've been doing projects there every year and probably I think this was the biggest one yet. And uh, when uh, John Veltheim and I write a book, uh, you'll hear more of that story. So this is our, our design that we had for our research. You can't read it, but I'm gonna go through it. But this is what we put together to use over those, we were there for what, two weeks? Two weeks. Two weeks. Next slide. So the first thing is we wanted to observe shifts. We wanted to observe it through evaluation. And one of the ways we wanted to do this is through the orthopedic evaluation. So we're going to use those arts that I talked about. The key thing to remember with arts is that we are evaluating to show change. We're not diagnosing. Now, next one here. The key thing is that, you got to click it. There you go. Is that because we're working with elephants, and orangutans and sun bears, we cannot evaluate them you know, in person. We have to do it through a surrogate. So if we're doing a pilot project, we have to prove that using a surrogate works. Because when I talk about people that we use surrogates, they're like rolling their eyes. You know, how does that work? So the next slide here. These are the two guys we picked. And we picked them for a reason because very similar builds. And one's Andre, one's uh, Dr. Kono. He's a chiropractor from Japan. And we'll go to the next slide. And what I did was orthopedic evaluation. And the reason why I picked these guys is you can see on the left side of the bottom, that's a straight leg raise. You saw me do it today. And what was interesting is that when I did it to Andre, his straight leg raise only went to about 30 degrees. He was very, very tight. But when I did Dr. Kono, his legs went all the way up. When I evaluated Andre's shoulders, his shoulders went up really nicely, but the chiropractor was restricted. So it was cool, it was different. And also, one of them had limitations in left rotation. The other one had limitations in right rotation. We lied them down on the floor side by side, and we got them to do what we call a merging or a shape shift, where they would uh, sort of assume the other person's energy field. And once they did that, I would do a reevaluation. And we had all this on video. And what blew me away is that Andre, who was very tight in his hamstrings, all of a sudden his legs went all the way up. And then the doctor from Japan, we evaluated him, all of a sudden now he's stuck. 
And now Andre's restricted in the shoulder, and the other guy can now move in the shoulder. And now all of a sudden their necks changed. In the next slide. And then we looked at the biofield. The clicking? There we go. So the biofield viewer. That's so this, John, in case you're wondering. That's, that's John. John. Yeah. <laughs> Look at those eyes. So you have a healthy throat chakra, John. Why aren't you teaching more? I know. So Thornton is going to explain this a little bit on the video. But we did these biofield viewers of these two guys. And the reason why we picked them is they were completely different. And when they did the shape shift, you could see that each one assumed the other person's energy field. Okay, next one. Now, the third thing that we wanted to do was behavioral changes. When I work with human beings, you know, the key thing we're always finding out is what are your goals? You know, do they want to get back to work? Do they want to get back to play? Maybe it's um, functional activities, activities of daily living, walking up and down stairs, getting in and out of bed, in and out of a car. What's different? But with these animals, we had to measure something different. Because, you know, we could show these orthopedic eval changes through surrogates. You know, we could have this biofield viewer. But what does that really mean? The key change had to be this behavioral change. So we had to observe the behaviors. And what happened was the mahuts, who were the trainers of the elephants, they would talk to us about the characteristics of the elephants. And after we treated them, they would share the changes. And also the vets with the orangutans. After we treated them, they would also share their experiences. You can go to the next you one. You know the biggest thing I noticed? When Carrie D'Ambrosio got in the energy field of 66 elephants, oh, yeah. <laughs> his behavior changed. <laughs> he taught me to meditate. <laughs> You can go to the next slide. That's yours. It's blue. I know, but I already talked about okay, it. Okay. Oh, yeah. sure. This is what I want to talk about. Look at the guy on the left. This is the king orangutan. We're in Borneo now, and there are seven islands, and they have orangutans on the islands. And this guy, when we first met him, we went down and kind of just you know, took a look at them, and this guy was very aggressive. You know, he was you know, uh, you know, urinating in the water. <laughs> I'm not going to mention what else he was doing. He was throwing stuff at us. He was very aggressive, and also Juliet is the one on the right. That's his girlfriend, but he, they kind of pushed her on him. And she was remembering that little, uh, this little plastic drum, and he would, like, push her out of it. So he was just very aggressive. And so we thought he would be the first one we treat. So we had a shape shift. Remember, the, it was the vet from, uh, from the boss. Uh, Dr. On, Dr. Rani Oktali from uh, Indonesia was yeah. the surrogate, yeah. This was the most intense session I've ever given. I thought the surrogate was going to jump off and rip my throat out. I mean, you remember that. I mean, I needed a session after that session. Yes, so, please don't forget about practitioner sessions sometimes yeah. after these sessions. So anyways, after treating, you know, this uh, king orangutan, it was, it was like a choir boy for the next three days. I couldn't believe it. It was like he was on, what was the drug that you were on, that you said that you were on? <laughs> More for, yeah. <laughs> no, but his, his behavior totally changed. He started to show more respect towards Juliet. He was just more curious about us. He was walking around more. He wasn't so aggressive. So that's one of the key things that we want to show. We know that what we did actually made a change. It wasn't all this range of motion stuff and, and biofield viewer stuff. It was actually something concrete. It was a behavioral change. Yeah. And, oh, we're going to start now. So this is, our, this is how we set up our research design. So the first thing we did, you see a picture of me, I'm evaluating, actually it's you, evaluating John up there. And what we would do is that we would get a surrogate. So we would you know, kind of muscle test to see who would be the best surrogate for the animal we're working on. So in this case, it was John. And so what I would do is I would do an orthopedic evaluation on John. So I just drew up here. We have a picture of a, of a person and kind of we have the elephant here. And you saw me do some of those evaluations up here earlier. But we did a lot more. We checked all the organs. We checked the arms and the legs. We checked the head and neck. We checked the diaphragms. I also checked the spine. We checked all those different areas. And then as soon as we, as we were doing that to save time, you can see the picture off to the right. We had um, the elephant, or it could be orangutan, against the wall. And we were doing the biofield viewer. We were scanning just to getting a baseline measurement. So I'm getting a baseline measurement of the surrogate and a baseline measurement of the animal. Now we want to take the surrogate and bring them in and do a biofield viewer to measure their energy field. So we have three things now. This is our baseline measurement. He's our surrogate. 
So we got his orthopedic eval, and we got his biofield viewer. That's our baseline. And all we did is take a baseline biofield view of the elephant. Okay, that's our beginning. I want you to notice the colors that are on John as himself before he does a shift. So you notice all the green up in the uh, heart chakra and shoulder area. But I'll be going to that. Now, the next thing we did, remember we've already proved this, that shape shifting works, merging works, is now John would shape shift into that ele or elephant or orangutan that we're gonna work with. So we had to give him some time until he was ready. And then once he felt he was there, we would do a debriefing. This blew me away. <laughs> because <laughs> in my clinic, I always interview my patients. I'm always asking them, you know, what's the mechanism of injury? How did this start? You know, how's your marriage? How's, you know, everything in your life, your work, everything? I never thought of talking to these animals. You know, actually, we didn't do it the first few times. And all of a sudden, it just started to emerge. But this blew me I, away. Because I hit the clicker. <sighs> <laughs> Tell them about that one. They're, they're, oh, we're on a time limit. Go. Quick one. That was a quick one. Just to the, the one that was in the cage. This one orangutan, through you know, the surrogate, told us that he was afraid of being released. And it was all fear issues. And the head uh, vet of boss said, who told you that? Nobody's supposed to know that. I mean, it was just one story after another. OK. Thank you. Thank you. Look at the change in the biofield viewer here as he, as he uh, merges with that uh, elephant. So this is John as the animal. He merged. And also the next one is the ortho eval. Good. So once he merged and became the animal, we did the biofield viewer, and we also did another orthopedic evaluation. And we compared that to our baseline measurement. Now we're ready for the session. Okay. So in this case here, I'm doing the session. And what Lucia did is she had several cameras. One camera would be on us you know, doing the session. We'd have people observing, observing the, uh, the surrogate, but also observing the animal that we're treating and observing nature. We had about 15 people all looking around observing all these areas. Okay. And I just want to make a note, this was my question earlier because we found that once there was a session, if we would uh, do a time warp and check when we should do the evaluation in the biofield viewer to see the shift, and sometimes it was four hours, five hours, we didn't have that time. So we went into quantum time mm -hmm. and we, we uh, moved the clock forward in Mindscape, let's say. Then we did the evaluations and huge differences compared to if we would have done them like one minute after. Yeah. yeah. Next slide. And then after we did that, we would do the orthopedic evaluation as a surrogate of the animal, and then simultaneously we do the biofield viewer to see if there's any change in the animal itself. Look and, at that change again. Yeah. yeah. And so here's the biofield viewer of the surrogate as the animal after the treatment. Yeah, pink is a good color apparently. It looks good on John too. <laughs> <laughs> and then the debriefing is that after, let's say, John as a surrogate went through this whole treatment, you know, we would sit down and, and say, well, how do you feel now? You know, what was going on? That one particular orangutan who was afraid of being released into the wild, you know, how do you feel now? I feel much better. And all of a sudden, we would see behavioral changes because all of a sudden, the eating pattern would change with the animal. Their total behavior, they wouldn't be so erratic, they'd be much calmer, okay? And then finally, once we got all the measurements we want, then the surrogate was released from the shape shift. So we had to wait a bit of while for them to kind of come back to themselves. In order to make sure that John is John again, you know, we'd kind of, you know, muscle test to see, you know, is now a good time to reevaluate, is I would do another orthopedic evaluation to make sure that, you know, John is John again. Does he have the same findings, you know, that we recorded up in here? Okay. Did you find out who you are yet, John? After all that? <laughs> and then we also did a biofield viewer again. And we saw that he was John again with that. And the other thing that was interesting, too, is that sometimes the surrogate needed a treatment. Because if it was a really intense session, like I told you, I needed a session after doing the treatment. But sometimes the surrogate needed a session as well. <laughs> see, he's just coming off being a surrogate. You can see. <laughs> I think he did. Who is that? That's uh, Doctor Who. 
<laughs> uh, laying on the table, yeah, yeah. that's Dr. Uh, Gordon. Gordon. And uh, I, I, I will take a moment and really thank this veterinarian. He mm. just sold eight veterinary clinics in uh, England. He's in New Zealand now in Taupo. He is a holistic vet. He's amazing. And he really supported uh, our project financially. And I'm so, so grateful for his help. Yeah. yeah. He was a good shape shifter, too. And what we did after all these different measurements is we would have debriefings. So there's Thornton and Kimberly. They're giving us a, a debriefing of sort of what happened from their point of view in the next slide. And then all the note takers that would take a look at the mirror and the environment, taking a look at things. Because I was so focused on working with the surrogate, I, I, I'm not paying attention to everything around, but people just wrote some incredible things, so everybody shared that. Wow, that's a good picture. Yeah, well, there was a picture there. Wow, do you know that picture? That's so interesting. That was the head of the National Guard with his gun, and oh, Indonesia's yeah. a very interesting country. I probably can't show his picture. That's interesting. Yeah. Went out. So at the end, we just got everybody together and kind of shared all the different debriefings. This is yours. Yeah, so this is Rama. He's a forest conservationist. He's very in touch with the forest. So he is standing and noticing all of the changes in the environment simultaneous. You know, that's that ripple effect when the small affects the big, so to speak. And this is uh, Dr. Thornton. He's doing a biofield viewer, seeing if it's possible to notice something in the environment while we're doing sessions. And I don't know if it's just my perspective, but I see the world wild in the middle of that. <laughs> so that's a biofield viewer uh, image of that forest there. Oh, this is a good story. Tell us one. This is a quick little story. So this is a mom and an aunt and a an auntie and a little baby. And they didn't want this male orangutan anywhere near themselves or this baby. Mm -hmm. So we did a session, an observation session on that concept. And that afternoon, when we went back down, they were all sitting together. It was just beautiful. Mm -hmm. And, it, and the, the keepers had never seen them together before. So that was really awesome. So there's another key behavioral change. And remember Julia. We, she came up, we had to do a session on her, and you know, Lucia was insistent we bring the treatment table down to where the islands are. I said, well, let's just do it up here at the lodge. It's, <laughs> there's air conditioning. And she goes, let's bring them down. And I go, well, you know, what's going to happen down there? She goes, we just got to observe. As soon as we set up the table, it was Ronnie, Ronnie, one of the uh, female vets. She lied on the table. As soon as, and she was the surrogate for Juliet. As soon as we started the session, this is the picture that we took. She all of a sudden came out of the jungle and she sat and observed the session. As soon as the, and it blew me away, as soon as the session was over, she just went back into the jungle. Nonverbal you know? communication. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we did have a control group for those people out there. Uh, we brought an elephant in, we went through you know, the biofield viewer, it went off into the pen. We had a, a surrogate who we'd evaluate, do the biofield viewer. Everything was set up the same way, except there was no treatment. Right, Tracy? No treatment. This goes with what Tracy goes <laughs> after, but there was a change. So that was my question again. What are we doing? It's back to who and what and uh, bubble of doubt are, are we popping here? Because what's going on, really? Mm -hmm. Takeaway points. For me, the takeaway point for this has got me out of my office, which is great. And who, want, who else want to be with cool animals like orangutans and elephants? But the thing that I learned was the pause is that when you're working with that client in front of you, that things shift around you and pay attention to that. So for me, it really slows down. You know, when I'm doing a session, I take my time with it. You see John, I watch him when he does that. You know, he does something and then he kind of walks away. I think he's just, a, he just did something and just observing what's the change that takes place after that. The other key thing, it just reaffirms, you know, my love of evaluation and the power of evaluation using orthopedic eval but also the surrogate. But the key thing is the change in behavior. And one last thing from my perspective is that we had, it wasn't just me and Lucia and John doing the treatment. We had you know, several other people doing it, and some people who were beginners in body talk. And the thing that I loved, it didn't matter who was giving the session, we saw a change. And that was powerful to me. Well, I think we got validated that as a non-attached observer, observing from heart space, that we had huge changes, yeah? The importance of six subtle senses in consciousness-based energy medicine, and I cannot stress enough the importance of Mindscape, Advanced Mindscape, and now Mindscape for Animals, and Lincoln Awareness Journey, because when you're working with non-verbals, we're so busy listening to the one who talks loud all the time, we're not listening to that subtle 
Now, whether it's a cell of the body or an animal or human, uh, interdimensional beings, it doesn't matter. So it's about listening, but using your six subtle senses. The importance of uh, shape-shifting or merging with the client when you have someone who can there seems to be another level that happens within the session even though we know it's the practitioner's observation something happens when we have that client that connects with that other and so that was really powerful as well in the animal work we're doing everything through surrogate because we don't want to force anything on animals because we get in the way of the change and there's also legal ramifications about touch these days um, and I think the last one is the power of the intake from the shape-shifted or merged surrogate. And we saw that giving the animal a voice. Because mm. I truly believe in that moment of giving the animal a voice is already a change. Just because you've, you've freed up some of that information. That's you. That's me, of black printing. Outcome. We're on a new path. We're making known the unknown even more consciously than we ever were before. And we're going to be uh, showing something new in 2018. And we're going to call it the magic of observation. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, for those of you, you know, that want to learn evaluation, we teach the orthopedic evaluation class, but there's just one of me teaching it. You can, there is a conference special. You'll get an email from Alex and you get a very good discount on all this. You can learn everything that I teach, everything you saw me do on stage, everything I teach in the orthopedic evaluation and a lot more is on these different products. I just wanted to just, just give one shout out. I've been teaching for 30 years and evaluation for many years. And I got the opportunity of watching um, one of my students teach this weekend, you know, Tracy. You know, she was one of the, uh, the best in my class with regards to uh, the practical skills, but also evaluation. And I think as a, as a teacher, it's always exciting and it's just so meaningful when one of your students takes that information, embodies it, makes it their own, and then takes it to a new level. So well done, Tracy. Yeah. And I was watching her up here. She did a pretty good job with the evaluations. Good work. And includes it in her thesis. Yes. How cool is that? So well, we have a video we'd like you to watch. I think they'll turn on the uh, lights a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, I hope it raises some questions within yourself and some reasons to go on an adventure and explore uh, within the environment and within nature. And I got to say, I'm so excited to see more of the instructors doing retreat style classes. Keeping people in an environment where they can embody some of the changes instead of going home every evening and unraveling some of that change. So yeah. I'd like oh, to see you doing thing. that even. You know, <laughs> it just popped up. You know, we have Janet Galipo doing studies, you know, Laura, um, Tracy, and you know, we've done this study. All of you can do studies. You know, you can, I've been doing studies with my patients all the time. Take your time with each patient that comes in. Take a history. They're all on, you can download them on the IBA website. You know, learn to evaluate even a few things. But do what we did today, or even parts of it if it's overwhelming, but learn to be an active observer and just observe what the changes are occurring and happening. And you'll learn from every patient that you see. Case studies. Case studies. Right on. Thanks, you guys. Okay. <laughs>
So this had me asking myself the obvious question, which was, what's really going on here? Hi, I'm Lucia Jacob, founder of Linking Awareness Adventures, where we explore nonverbal communication with all sentient life, and we share frequency activations from a heart-based perspective. I'm also a senior instructor for animal and human classes for the International Body Talk Association. For years I've been teaching the participants of my courses how to shapeshift or merge with the animal or human client, as well as utilizing themselves, another human, a teddy bear or holographic surrogates. You know, the brainstorming about this pilot project began as Dr. Carrie D'Ambrosio and I were at uh, Eagle's Eye Ranch where I live and facilitate many of my courses on a year-round basis. And these are some of my personal questions about the possibilities of validating what I've been observing for so many years as I travel around the world. Is linking awareness with the environment and the sentient beings within that environment possible? Is non-attached observation possible? Does incorporating a state of oneness while using a surrogate, in this case animals and humans, affect change on the client? Does being a non-attached observer while using a surrogate affect change in the client? Because I believe that this is happening, is it even possible to validate these concepts? So for this particular project, I was excited to be able to gather an eclectic group of 15 participants. Joining the elephants, the orangutans and myself for this Linking Awareness pilot project in Indonesia were people like veterinarians, advanced energy practitioners, advanced body talk for animals and humans practitioners, instructors of animal and human consciousness based modalities, osteopaths, chiropractors, acupuncturists, massage therapists, veterinary neurologists, the head veterinarian at the Jakarta Police Department for the Canine and Equine Division, a biomedical engineer, and PhDs and veterinary lecturers. The most exciting part for me was that we really didn't know how this project would unfold until we started, as well as what the outcomes might be. It's a new paradigm, it's separate from um, modern medicine's diagnostic systems because what we're seeing is um, biophotonic interference patterns which um, do not happen in line with um, physiological changes, they happen well before. Once we have a biofield image of somebody, we have a baseline and we can speak to them and open a channel of trust because we see things in the interference patterns on their body surface and around their body. And with this baseline image, marrying that to the professional practitioner's process of establishing their course of action, the protocol they're going to be using, and then being able to monitor the progress of that protocol live in real time. My name is Dr. Kerry D'Ambrosio, and I'm a physical therapist, athletic trainer, osteopath, and doctor of oriental medicine. And I've been working on humans for the past 30 years. You know, we came over here and I was wondering how could we duplicate what I do in the office out here, you know, in the jungle. Well, we're dealing with elephants and orangutans, so we're not allowed to touch them. So the first thing we had to do is prove that surrogates, you know, the use of them works. And with Thornton's equipment and orthopedic evaluation, we were able to show that one person was able to take on the shape and the, you know, the, the physical and psychological characteristics of the other individual. Uh, we would use uh, orthopedic evaluation on the surrogate first to get a baseline. And then we would use Thornton's uh, biofield to get a baseline. And what was interesting is that once the uh, surrogate would shape shift, the whole orthopedic evaluation would change and the biofield would change as well. And something that was unexpected for me was the interview. I never really thought about that. You know, I use interview all the time with my patients, but I didn't think of interviewing a surrogate regarding how an elephant was doing, an orangutan was doing. And 
So we did it and the results were very interesting because a lot of the keepers of the elephants and the orangutans, they verified what we were finding with our evaluations. So next came the treatment. And we tested a lot of you know, different possibilities. You know, we did fascial energetics, we did uh, Lucia's work with her linking awareness, we tested body talk, we had many different instructors testing, which I liked. And the beautiful thing is that we saw change. That's what I wanted to see. We saw change in, in the orthopedic evaluation, and we saw change in Thornton's uh, biofield. What we found is that these animals, actually, their behaviors changed. But after the session, they were able to have a, a better sort of relationship. So I think I'll walk away with a better, you know, overall perspective of, you know, patient care and also better appreciation for what these animals are going through and, you know, what's happening with the forest and that. It has been profound to see how Lucia's ability to communicate with the animals has really given a much deeper understanding to what's going on. I'm Gordon Roberts, a veterinary surgeon. Um, who specialises in holistic and natural medicines. I own a group of veterinary hospitals in England called Well Pets Animal Hospital, which I've just sold, and now I'm focusing my time on working on how to help endangered species and also trying to get help with a new paradigm in animal healing. I've come here for a number of reasons. One is very, very interested in Lucia's work on animal communication because I think that could be a big breakthrough for holistic healing. Also, I'm here to um, network with the other people about you know, just their ideas on uh, healing in general, as we have a chiropractor here, an osteopath here, and other veterinarians, So, plus the animal communication, a lot of body talkers. I'm also here to see, understand more what's going on with these endangered and critically endangered species and how we can help them and understand the situation better. And also here to see how we can um, create a scientific study to see, to, to give validation to animal communication and holistic healing. When a human with limited experience in energy medicine was asked to take on the consciousness of an animal in the presence of that group of observers they did, thoroughly and completely, and those experiences will change the work of those particular people going forward forevermore. I believe that the changes we observed or experienced were a result of the communion or collection of these people and their presence as a unit, not necessarily a result of the application of techniques or even the intent behind them. This was beyond intent and beyond agendas. I like to imagine that we are making known the unknown. Dr. Carrie D'Ambrosio uses the concept at times of validating change physically for the non-physical action of consciousness and energy. Or as Dr. Thornton Streeter has characterized it, popping the bubble of doubt.